We'll also be having the legacy of late Governor Akira Dolu on the show this morning as we take on that as our second hot topic for the morning. Well, a look at the national dailies will be on Off the Press as well, and we'll be looking at some top trending stories this morning. Good morning. You're welcome to The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. My name is Rume Paulson. And I am Nyamgul Agaji. Today we're starting on a very sad note because uh, yesterday there was news that broke out that, uh, as we would put it in Nigeria, two Iroko trees or two uh, very giant figures in the political scene and our national life uh, just um, left us. Uh, we're talking about the Speaker of the um, uh, House of Representatives in uh, 1999, uh, Umar Galina Abba. He died yesterday, and we also heard the news of uh, Rotimi Akerdolu, the governor of Ondo State. We can only say may their souls rest in peace. Yeah, that is one of our top trending stories this morning, and Ondo Governor Rotimi Akeredolu dies after a long health battle. Ondo State Governor Oluwa Rotimi Akeredolu died in the early hours of Wednesday morning after a prolonged health battle. Akeredolu, a senior advocate of Nigeria SAN, ex-president of the Nigerian Bar Association NBA, and ex-attorney general of Ondo State, was a second-term governor before his death. The State Commissioners for Information and Orientation, Bamidili Adimola Olateju, announced the governor's death in a statement. Governor Akaradolu, in quotes, answered the internal, internal call while receiving medical treatment in Germany. He succumbed to the complications arising from protracted prostate cancer, she wrote. Adamola Olateji said in a letter had been said a letter had been sent to President Bola Tinubu to inform him of Akaradolu's passing, adding that the family and the state government will release further details regard, regarding the funeral arrangement. Akaradolu, Aketi as he was fondly called by friends and admirers, wore many hats and was acknowledged by many of his contemporaries as a dogged leader with unbending personal convictions. Until his death, he was the chairman of the South Governors Forum, uh, Southern Governors Forum, a body with governors of 17 states in the Southern Nigeria as members. Akara Delu also led other five colleagues in the Southwest as chairman, championing many reforms, especially in the area of security, prominent among which was the establishment of the Southwest Security Network, codenamed Amotekun. He was born on the 21st of July, 1956, in Owo, on those states, to the late Reverend J. Ola Akaradolu of Owo and Lady Evangelist Grace Akaradolu of Igbotu Eshe Odo, government area of Undo State. Akaradolu was a voice against herdsmen, attacks on farmers, and one of the unwavering critics of the administration of the then president, Muhammad Buhari, despite belonging to the same ruling party, which is the All Progressive Congress. Aketi, who won his re-election as Ondo State Governor in October 2020, was sworn in for a second term in office in February 2021 and had been flown abroad for treatment for his medical condition in June when his health battle intensified. He returned to Nigeria in September after months overseas, but stayed in Ibadan, the Oyo state capital. As his health worsened, Akaradolu was under <coughs> intense pressure from opposition parties and activists to resign or hand over power to Loki Aye Datiwa in line with the 1999 constitution. Also, the governor's loyalists in the State House of Assembly were at loggerheads with Aye Datiwa attracting President Bola Tinubu's intervention. Eventually, the governor transmitted power to Aida Tiwa early December when he embarked on another medical leave to Germany, the second in 2023. He was an associate member of the Nigerian Red Cross Society or your state branch. He also accepted and became the patron, the Nigerian Law Society, Faculty of Law, University of Lagos patron, Breast Cancer Association of Nigeria, patron, the Law Society, Faculty of Law, Adekule Adjustin University, Akungba Akoko. It was also the patron Sports Writer Association of Nigeria, or your state branch. Aketi was married to Betty Ayamu Akeredolu and blessed with four children and many grandchildren. Um, yeah. Today we're just celebrating the life of... Yeah. Of I, I'd, like, I'd like to uh, remember him for what he stood for, the kind of man that I, I, grew, I, I grew to admire. 
uh, very well, um, very outspoken person. Yeah. Uh, like it was said in the in the literature you just read, there he was criticizing even the government that he was a part of, you mm -hmm. know, APC government of uh, Muhammad Buhari. He was always outspoken when it came to uh, power sharing. He yes. was outspoken security matters. He was very outspoken and all that. And um, I'd also like to remember him as one of the governors with the best dress sense mm -hmm. because yeah. he, he, he was he was a guy man as, <laughs> as it is, a a bob boy, a fashion. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I'd like to remember him like that. I I I don't I don't believe. I may be wrong, but I don't believe all the Ondo saga that has been going on. He the had a direct yeah. hand in it because he had been incapacitated for a very long time, mm -hmm. the way I see. And uh, from stories that came, including the forging of his signature yes, and all that. So yes. it must have gotten to a head where he couldn't have done all the things he, that he were attributed to he him. He was trying to you know, save his life. Yeah. At so, he was fighting yes. for his life at the point. So at the time they were saying he's not uh, relinquishing power to the deputy and all that and all that. Was he really in his faculties? Was he really in his right senses? Was he able to sign any document and all that? So I, I would like to remember him, like I said, like... Uh, a hero of democracy that I've always mm -hmm. known him to be, mm -hmm. a very outspoken person, a person who is passionate about reforms and the interests of his people. I don't know much about Ondo State, what he mm -hmm. did in Ondo State, but I do know what he did for the Southwest and for Nigeria as mm -hmm. a whole. You know, mm -hmm. security-wise, Amotekun, yes. he was almost like single-handedly because he, he was the focal point uh, where everything was rallying around until we got Amotekun, which is doing well, mm -hmm. and talking about power coming back to the South and so many other things. So. Yeah. His memory in my own head will be. Yeah, a very I remember good one. when the news broke yesterday. I, I, I saw it on my phone, and I think my first exclamation was, oh no. Like, because yeah. I was really hoping mm. that he'll pull through. I mean, I think a few weeks ago, about four weeks ago, five weeks ago, we had a guest here, yeah. you know, talking about him and um, on those states and the fact that the, the governor is not even there and the governor had been sick. And I think a lot of people were just hoping that um, he would get better. And mm -hmm. come back and you know rule the affairs of Ondo State, but sadly, a red gem has gone yesterday yeah. to to rest, and we just hope and pray that his soul will rest in peace. And we're praying for strength to um, the, the family, family members yeah. and even the people of Ondo State because obviously they've lost a dear brother, a dear friend, a dear father, and whatever you know he was to those people. So we're praying for strength for these people at this point. Yeah. And not only him, we also remember the family of Galina Abba, who yes. also died yesterday and has been buried al already according to Islamic tradition. May his soul rest in peace and may uh, the family uh, have the fortitude to bear this irreparable loss. Mm. Uh, well, it's still another very sad thing. Um, even though it happened a few days ago, bandits are a step ahead of government, according to the Sultan, on the plot to killings. So that's the second top trending issue. The Sultan of Sokoto, Sa'ad Abubakar III, has condemned the Christmas Eve killings in 20 communities in Mangu, Bokos, Mangu, and Barkin Ladi local government areas of Plateau State. He faulted security agencies for their failure in intelligence gathering in which they could not avert the heinous crime leading to the death of over 100 people. Abubakar called on the government and security agencies to be more proactive and scale up its intelligence gathering techniques because the bandits are terrorists and are always a step ahead, according to him. The Sultan, who is also the President Supreme Council of Islamic Affairs, stated this in a goodwill message at the closing of the 80th National Islamic Vacation Course, which held on Wednesday at the Air Abubakar Tafar Balewa Stadium, uh, Bauchi. He said, and I quote, we have problems of insecurity. Just a couple of days, uh, days back, there was this clash in Plateau State where over 100 plus lives were lost. Why do we keep on having these clashes? Why do we keep on having these deaths caused by ourselves? A couple of weeks back, the Tudunbiri issue in Kaduna State is still fresh in our minds, and now the one in Plateau. End of quote. Abubakar also warned against politicizing insecurity in the country, saying this was dangerous and the worst way to go. Mm. He, he raised some very pertinent questions yeah. that should be asked because the answer is always in the question. And if you ask the right questions, you probably will get the answer well. But insecurity, ah. 
It's I don't know. so sad, like really, really sad. And I think this has even been going on social media because people have been talking about it, saying, um, why are we not saying so much? I mm. mean, when Gaza, when the thing in Gaza happened yeah. and the news broke, everybody was talking about it. But this is right here in our corridor. Mm. This is in Plateau State and no one is really saying anything as much. And over a hundred lives. I remember that day, um, I think that was Tuesday, we were counting, we counted about 145. Yeah. And next thing it rose up to like 160, the 160 something. So they found more, uh, more bodies and stuff. And I'm like, this is 2023. What is our security agencies doing? Why are we still having this sort of issues? I mean, Boko Haram came. There was a rise of Boko Haram mm -hmm. at some point. But right now it's banditry and kidnapping and... Where are we as a nation? And we have how many billions for security in the budget? Security takes a chunk of it all. But yet, we're still seeing all of this. So what are the intelligence that they have to prevent these things even before they happen? Yeah, because so many questions when to be you talk answered. about banditry, you'll be thinking about stealing. Yes. You know, they will come, they, they could kill you if you resist and all that. Mm -hmm. But um, they're, they're basically thieves that want to cut away your, your property and all that. They are bandits. But when it comes to a situation where people will be moving from village to village, killing, killing. people, cutting them you know, to pieces, <sighs> even children, Horrific. What kind of resistance would the children give if they want to take their farm produce, for instance, or their cattle or something? You know? So this is a deliberate attempt. We're not dealing with bandits, even though that's the popular name yeah. we're giving them. But we're dealing with people who um, are doing some sort of cleansing. Uh, I wouldn't say ethnic cleansing because they could still be the same tribe and all yeah. that, except maybe their religion might change. But they will still be the same tribe. So I don't know how to call it. I would have loved to call it ethnic cleansing, but which ethnicity are they cleansing? Who are the people Why? who are what cleansing this? What is even this? the reason so, behind all of this? So if, if the government can ask all these questions, it's not enough for the president to say, go after the, the bandits. Before people can enter up to two, three, four to ten villages, know that they are in great numbers, maybe yes. in hundreds. So who are you going to arrest? At what time? What, what kind of intelligence do you have? No, but before they go to about 10 villages, they start with one. So if you have intelligence, 48, knowing 48 that... 48 hours, bandits will be operating and the government... You don't is know. Like, so you start it, in it one hour... It feels like the people are abandoned. You, you're hearing that, oh, they've killed... Let's say, for instance, they've, they've killed about 10 people mm. in this village so far. What are you doing to stop them? You can't just allow them to keep going. So mm -hmm. for 48 hours, everybody is silent. Nobody's doing anything. So there's no phone Fingers in that are, place that do you understand? they could Fingers are crossed. Sure Nobody is them. moving anywhere. It's, it's ridiculous. It's re like we need to take our security seriously. If you are a governor, a president, or a commission, or a local government you know, <laughs> official, you are supposed to protect the lives and properties of the citizens. That's the first. That the, is your the primary first assignment. assignment. If you are, if you're going into governance. So uh, now the governor of, uh, I think, the same state was telling us that there are places in Plateau State, up to more than sixty communities that have been occupied by these bandits communities. So how do so you let them paying, encroach into? They're, they're even paying tax to to bandits and all that, and the government seems quiet. Because it's not enough. And even another thing that I know that the vice president went to that place, but I think in a situation like this, the president should have been yes. there. But he was and celebrating you know, Christmas in Lagos. I, uh, Just so you know, we condemn yeah, so such acts. Um, yeah. We condemn what, what's happening in Plateau State. It is horrific. It is sad that this is happening here in Nigeria, in our corridors. Um, we just hope... And we pray that this would not happen again. And we hope that, you know, the people who have perpetrated this kind of horrific, wicked, I don't even know the words to use, we hope that they are brought to justice. And we pray for the families <coughs> and um, the people who, who had, you know, these people that have died, them in their lives. And A we lot pray of people the loved ones that they have. Them, yes. You know. We pray that God would just, you know, give them the fortitude to, to bear, yeah, bear this loss at this time. And like I say, we condemn any form of this right here.
Okay, let's move over to another top trending story. It's been a very sad day so far, but let's look at this one. China's import from Nigeria rise to 22.5% in quarter three, 2023. The Chinese Consulate General has said the People's Republic of China imports from Nigeria rose by 25% in the third quarter of 2023. This, according to stakeholders, is an indication of positive bilateral trade between both countries. This came even as the Chinese Consul General in Lagos, Ms. Yan Yuking, reinstated that China firmly supports African countries in exploring development paths and cooperation in poverty reduction and promote, promotion of mon modernization of agriculture. In a statement, Yuking said, China and Nigeria have built nice cooperation mechanism, broad cooperation platform, while practical co cooperation in various fields are deepening and expanding. In the first three quarters of 2023, China Nigeria bilateral trade reached 17.25 billion US dollars, and China's imports from Nigeria increased by 22.5%. She noted that the Consulate General of the People's Republic of China in Lagos would like to extend sincere New Year wishes to friends from all walks of life in the consular area at this wonderful moment. Since 2013, China has helped construct more than 6,000 kilometers of railway, 6,000 kilometers of roads, and 80 large-scale power facilities in Africa. Landmark projects by China in Africa include the Mombasa Nairobi Railway, Nigeria's Lekki Deep Sea Port, and the headquarters of the African Center for Disease Control and Prevention, CDC. Chinese enterprises have built more than half of the wireless stations and high-speed mobile broadband networks in Africa, laying more than 200,000 kilometers of optical fiber and serving more than 900 million African people. China is Africa's largest trading partner, and by 2022, China-Africa trade reached $282 billion, accounting for 20% of Africa's total foreign trade. China's FDI stock in Africa exceeds 47 billion, 1.8 times the 2013 figure. China has built 25 economic and trade cooperation zones with Nigeria and other African countries to promote industrialization in Africa. China is also supporting Africa in implementing the United Nations 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development. Um, this is a good thing. First of all, I, I don't understand the headline at, at all because <laughs> it sounds ambiguous to me. Mm. China's imports from Nigeria rise to 22.5. Uh, so that means they are importing more from us. That's what it means. Well, I don't know. It, for me, it still sounds ambiguous. Okay, maybe that is that is what it is. They should have just said uh, exports from Nigeria to, to China. China is this, this, that. But imports, China's imports from Nigeria, it could also mean that... Uh, what We're Nigeria importing. is importing mm, I don't from think China. Near. So, okay, I, I get what you mean. Yeah, so because mean. the body of the, the story still didn't say uh, goods that are moving from Nigeria to China and all that, but we do know that a lot of things are coming from China to Nigeria. Definitely. What are we even exporting to China? The, it should have, the report should have given us the kind of things that are leaving Nigeria for China. Right. Because to China, know how we're even making our money. China is very biased uh, when, the, when it comes to trade and even accepting anything from another country. So mm -hmm. what is that thing that is going to one of our biggest partners in the world trade um, space? So that we can know that maybe we need to produce more because China has the population, they mm -hmm, have the market mm -hmm. for this. And for it to even rise no. up to 22.5%, yes, so that means there is the market for it to even yes, more so as well. Yes, so we should have known. It's, it's, it's really vague. But if it means that things are leaving Nigeria to China and the, the, the value has risen to 22.5%, that's, that's, that's good. That's, that's a good thing. That's good. Like I said, things are looking up in 2024. <laughs> Okay, well, um, whatever it is, whether we are importing or exporting, let the Nigerian population have a feel of a good life because mm -hmm. it shouldn't always be that uh, Nigeria, uh, Nigeria is not getting it right in any way. But there's another thing. As we're going into 2024, we should be mindful what we say about Nigeria. Some of the things that we say just to get um, favors from uh, the other countries 
may be very detrimental to Nigeria, even more detrimental than the things that we are finding in Nigeria. For instance, you want asylum in the UK, and you say all sorts of things mm. about Nigeria that are negative yeah. and may not even be as bad as you are putting them, mm -hmm. just because you want asylum. It's, it's, you are part of the problem if yes. you are so, yeah. someone who says those kind of things. Let's mm -hmm. be patriotic a little bit and highlight the good things yeah. that we also find in Nigeria. I think with everything, there are always pros and cons. It mm -hmm. depends on how you want to look at it. Sometimes we fixate on the bad things and forget there are good things. And you're not living in the moment. You're not enjoying the good things because you're just looking at the bad thing and that's all that's in your mind. So with Nigeria, I, I know Nigeria might not be the best country right now for a lot of people and that's why you're seeing this whole jackpot syndrome like everybody's trying to move out of nigeria in search for greener pastures but why can't we look at the good things as well and then try to fix the bad things so you're you're fixated on the good things that there, helps there, your there mind a lot of good things here yeah. just being a nigeria is a, a nigerian is a good thing i i tell you there are countries that do not have people who are so resilient as Nigerians. Yeah. You see, Nigerians are, are like the most happy. They're, 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 they're happiest people. There are places, especially in Africa, where you go to and you tell them, I'm a Nigerian. They know that you, are, you have the, I will never give up spirit. Yeah. You know? Sometimes you go to other countries and you enter a club and you just, you just see somebody doing the gra gra syndrome you know this is a Nigerian. Nigerian and they change the music and <laughs> you know it has to be a Nigerian thing Nigeria is some a place that you can go out and beat your chest and say, I come happy. from yes. I come from Nigeria and, and they recognize you so what, what are they're you like oh you're Nigerian with? yeah are yeah. you Yoruba are you Igbo like you get they, that they don't the even care when we go outside it's here that we fight that we are Igbos mm -hmm. Yorubas and all. if you're a Nigerian they just respect you they, give they you that respect you. Yeah. as a Nigerian knowing that your spirit is a can-do spirit. Mm -hmm. So we should be proud of that and just beat our chest. And even our exports, I mean, you're seeing us making giant strides. For instance, the health sector in the U.S., there are lots of Nigerian If you cannot doctors. export the farm produce, we can export the people. Talent. Yes. So Talent. you go there and you find out some hospitals, the entire shift is made up of Nigerian Nigerians. doctors and nurses Tech and all bros, that. Tech Texas, yes. like... Nigerians were doing, and let's even talk about our entertainment industry as well. That is a big export here in Nigeria. Man. Like we're winning Grammys, we're winning so many awards, we're on billboards, like we're getting recognition left, right, and center. You're going somewhere, you're hearing them play Rema, you're hearing them play Bonner Boy. You are going to be our so happy. Our movies are even going movies, high now. Yeah. That, that, yeah. Look at Amazon, like look at, look at um, one, all these. Um, Netflix, the, the, the Netflix yeah, and the Amazon, know. like all of them are trying to get into the Nigerian market. They've come here to tap into the Nigerian market because they know that Nollywood is big. For a very yeah. long time, if you hear of a very big movie that is coming on, um, it will have either a Nigerian actor, mm -hmm. maybe even though they're resident wherever they are, yes. but a Nigerian actor or something that we're will, everywhere. Something that will touch Nigeria so that when it comes to Nigeria, it, it will resonate well with mm -hmm. the people and all mm -hmm. that. So I think Nigeria is a, is, a, is a country that we should be proud of and just uh, tell the world that we have arrived. That's uh, right. You know, <laughs> with, with, with a touch of gra gra, like we're here, <laughs> we're Nigerians, that. you know. Uh, and that is what the way to go. We should stop talking down on yeah. Nigeria. Yeah. Internally, we can fight our politicians. We can say a lot of things no, to make them be on their toes. That's what happens at home. You toes. can fight, but yes. you don't go out there and but, you know spread your death linen in public. At home, you can say, no, this is not right. This is not what you should do. But outside, you have to have a united front. Yeah. And I think that's what we need to do as Nigerians. Have a united front and then work together to make our nation better to that point where we're like, we're satisfied. We know that we've worked for this, not running away, not um, having to slander mm -hmm. our country, yeah. not, you know, not even being part of the problem because sometimes people are salient partners in, in certain things. For mm -hmm. instance, people are corrupt in their offices. It's not only the politicians right now. So you're trying as much as possible to make Nigeria better. And everyone was smiling. We already know Nigeria is the way it is. Okay, fine. Whether it gets How do better we move or not. From here? But, but you see, the entertainment industry, for instance, that we are talking about, is an industry that has next to not, no, zero influence of government mm -hmm. on it. Mm -hmm. So they're not giving them money. They're no not fun, doing So yeah. on their own. They were able to they flourish. Were, yes. So if you have the can do spirit of a Nigerian, don't wait for the government. 
And if we get to the point where we don't have to wait for the government, the government will be looking for us. Yes. Because, you know, if you find out you are no longer relevant, you'll be thinking of ways to connect mm -hmm. with the people. Look, but look, now, look at the, the you come home and we give you Chief Tensi for stealing money. And, <laughs> look and, at the entertainment know. industry. You hear that, okay, they go there and they win um, yeah. awards and stuff. And the government is congratulating them yeah, because you've gone there to so you understand proud. you've gone there to make a name mm -hmm. and so they are ready to congratulate you so that's what we can do at some point when you start doing all of these things and we're trying to flourish by ourselves the government has no choice but to dance to the tune yes. and say you know we're so proud of where nigeria is going and then they want to plug in because there's always that thing when yeah. you see that people are thriving you want to plug into that mm -hmm. and we're just hoping that you know things i'm, I'm excited for 2024 this is the last thursday in 2023 i'm excited mm -hmm. for 2024 and all of the things that are to come with it. And I know that Nigeria will be great again. Nigeria. Real soon. It would not tarry. Yeah. Nigeria is already great. <laughs> my it's God's my great. country. I love Nigeria. <laughs> all, the, all the people who are trying to bring us down. Well, this is Nigeria. I, I, don't, I don't have that craze of Jakba. Mm. Maybe my children will go, but I don't know. I've always told myself, even when I was young, that... Um, if I'm going abroad, it will be on my own terms. terms. Uh, I will have to go there, do what I can do. But that thing that will take me there should give me the wherewithal to come home anytime I like. Mm -hmm. So it shouldn't be that because I'm looking for transportation to come from UK <laughs> to Nigeria and I can't mm -hmm. have it. That's mm -hmm. why it will take me 10 years. You Let it come. be my decision to stay one year, two years without coming home. But I'd always like to know that it's within my grasp. Yeah, true. You know? All right, let's go on a short break. And when we return, um, we'll be looking at what the National Dailies are saying this morning. But first, let's look at the weather. Stay with us. <laughs> 